nervous system without causing long-term harm. To find out what gives this device its electrical knockout punch, we've come to Taser International in Scottsdale, Arizona. Today, they're building the X-26, their premier law enforcement weapon. The X-26 is made up of two major parts. The handle, which houses the devices that supply and control the Taser's electrical energy, and the cartridge, which contains the components needed to propel two probes up to 35 feet. The manufacturing process begins by installing the parts inside the handle. Step one is actually that we take a laser module and we align it into the housing so that it's okay. aiming where the darts are going to go. The epoxy this worker uses creates an indestructible bond, ensuring that the laser never moves. Mounting the laser sight is a critical step because it ensures that the probes will impact the target accurately. Next, they install the controller board, which includes the microprocessor that monitors and controls most of the taser's functions. This is the brains. It's got okay. the battery connector, it's got all the input switches, and it's all on a flexible circuit board system that allows you to fold this entire assembly up into a very small space, which allows us to make the device smaller. But don't let its size fool you. This motherboard packs a mother load of information, including the time and date when the unit fires, how much battery life remains, and an LED readout displaying the length of time the electronic pulse gets delivered to the target. So where does the taser get all its power? From these two 3-volt lithium energy cells. That's the same amount of power you need to run a flashlight. But it takes a lot more than 6 volts to disrupt the human nervous system. That's where these transformers come in. They take 6 volts and bump them up to 50,000 volts. The voltage inside this device can build up to about 50,000 volts until it breaks over and it forms that arc across. Okay. At that point, when the electricity can actually start flowing through the circuit, it drops to about 1,200 volts. So that's the most that the human body ever sees. In other words, it takes an initial burst of 50,000 volts for the current to penetrate a person's clothing and skin. But once a circuit is established, the actual energy that flows through the body is closer to 1,200 volts. 1,200 volts is enough energy to completely disrupt communication between your brain and certain muscles in your body. And as this training video shows, the effects can be painful, but are designed to be temporary without causing damage to the heart or other vital organs. There's still debate over the risks of tasers when they're used on people who are sick, on drugs, or in an agitated state. But Taser maintains that the electrical pulse from its devices has never caused a death. Now that workers have installed all the components, it's time to weld the handle together. But you won't see any sparks flying in this welding process. Instead of using an external heat source to melt the halves together, this welding machine applies high-frequency ultrasonic vibrations to the parts while holding them together under pressure. You probably hear that screeching sound? Yes, I do. <laughs> You're hearing the parts sort of screeching as they're being rubbed together at ultrasonic frequencies, which of course means right. uh, so fast your eye can't really see it. The energy from the vibrations creates heat, which melts the plastic and seals the taser's housing together. Now the taser is ready for its first function test. A technician places the units inside this automatic dry firing machine to make sure the taser fires properly and correctly logs each firing in its internal database. The second round of tests requires a human touch. These workers fire several hundred tasers at a time, 25 times in a row. They want to make sure each of the units generates a peak output of 50,000 volts 
every time they pull the trigger. If a unit fails, it's discarded. These guns may look ready to hit the streets, but they're missing one key component, the cartridge. These darts are just little pieces of metal, very sharp points, barbs like fish hooks. Trailing behind them is 35 feet of very thin wire. When they shoot out, 1,200 volts come from the gun right into the assailant. And this is what triggers those darts to launch. What is inside this little cup? Uh, it's a small explosive. All right, so this is a tiny amount of explosive that's going to get ignited by what? The electric charge from the taser. This is what happens when you pull the taser's trigger. First, an electrical arc detonates the explosive, forcing the capsule, filled with compressed nitrogen gas, downward onto a hollow puncture pin. That breaks the capsule open and allows the gas to escape. The expanded gas then builds pressure behind the two darts and launches them at a rate of 180 feet per second. There's one last thing Taser puts into these cartridges. It's a tracking system so people who use this device are accountable for their actions. What we did basically is we developed a system where every cartridge has a serial number and buried deep inside that cartridge are these little confetti tags printed with that serial number. When a user fires the taser, the confetti tags spray out of the cartridge, leaving behind a paper trail back to the owner. So when CSI shows up and they find these little dots, they put it under a magnifying glass or something, and they just read the serial number right off? Correct. Before workers attach these cartridges to the guns, inspectors x-ray each cartridge to make sure all of its components are in their proper position. These inspections are critical. Because each shot can mean the difference between either escalating or defusing a dangerous situation. Now it's Marshall's turn to fire a taser. To aim it, just put the laser right on the target. That's where your top probe's gonna strike. To load the weapon, just take the taser cartridge here, snap it right onto the front. It's, it's loaded and ready to go. The device is light. It weighs less than half a pound. Laser on target and pull the trigger. Pull the trigger, all right. No. <laughs> it's like a Christmas tree. Exactly. So when a person receives the shot, what does it feel like? Um, it's really difficult to explain. You, you kind of have to feel it to know. Hey, Marshall. Hey, Marshall. Here we go. Taser, taser, taser. Oh! 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 God! <laughs> now that was an interesting experience that I don't necessarily want to go through again. But what it feels like is you've got all the muscles in your entire back totally tensed up and there's oh, this oh. pulsating heat that's going all the way between those two electrodes and you are completely totally incapacitated they'd asked me to try to run toward the camera when it hit me i couldn't do anything oh. <laughs> 